Und jetzt? Hi everyone, can you hear us? Welcome to session five. My name is Shabna Mayel and I'm your host for this session. Hope you have enjoyed uh, this event so far. We are seeing a great attendance so far and quite happy with that. So thanks everyone for joining. And uh, for this session, we have the one and only Adam being here. Adam, your talk has a very interesting topic. So I let you take it away. Yeah, hello uh, and um, welcome back to uh, Jakarta live stream. This time is a CN, CN4J meeting, but it's a very similar infrastructure. And I uh, watched the talks from uh, Sebastian and a bit from uh, Rat, and they already covered uh, uh, Corcus. So I will try you know, to avoid Corcus a bit in my talk and focus on the uh, on the Jakarta e servers or runtimes. OK, um, so um, my name is Adam Bean. I'm a freelancer, consultant, and uh, yeah, a Java developer, actually. And I really still enjoy Java. Sometimes I also enjoy clouds. It really depends whether it makes sense or not. And um, yeah, and uh, I would call myself uh, for the last three weeks, since really three weeks, um, senior dev. Why this? Because I successfully managed to edit a YAML file, submit it to Kubernetes, and it actually without any errors. So usually, I everything worked well except the last part. You know, editing the YAML. I always made something wrong, and I had to know to analyze the Go errors. And um, yeah, so today uh, I will also try. To avoid editing YAML, but I will show you some YAML. Um, okay, so this was the introduction. So I'm senior dev now. So um, if you like um, something new, Airhex Live has online interactive workshops like this one, and uh, there is in an podcast Airhex FM. So uh, could be interesting. There are uh, some some conversations with people from Jakarta E and and micro profile community, even with Tanya and Mike Milinkovic from Eclipse Foundation. So if you like, uh, tune in. And um, this is uh, probably the most interesting uh, thing for you. This is my uh, question and answer shows once a month, first Monday of the month of the of the month, um, 8 p.m. CET. And uh, yeah, ask whatever you like, but uh, don't please don't uh, send me uh, emails with technical questions. So this this is the deal. So first, uh, cloud native and micro profile. So um, Probably uh, it was already introduced several times on just my, my point of view of the entire thing. And and the, what is the relation between Jakarta E and MicroProfile? So very briefly, for me, Jakarta E is more like, you know, the operating system. It was uh, designed by or designed, uh, yeah, uh, the APS uh, were designed by uh, different vendors working together and is implemented by several runtimes or servers. And I don't expect uh, too many changes in the upcoming years. Why not? Because because it's, it is already very good. And uh, actually, uh, if you if you will follow, you know, my reactions to uh, five years ago, Jakarta E E eight, you know, came late, and or Jakarta E seven was uh, was uh, was delayed a bit. So I was not that you know uh, angry or uh, or sad because. I was happy with Jakarta E6. I'm still, I'm still, I am. So it's not like you know, um, I'm waiting for the next big thing. So, so the the base layer here is Jakarta E. So it's very stable layer, and uh, we will get innovation, but not. I don't, I don't expect any revolution. So, um, micro profile also stable, but uh, it's not driven by by application servers vendors. But um, from my perspective, it is influenced by the cloud native foundation mostly by CNCF. And uh, why that? Because uh, if you look at that, so we have metrics, which is open metrics or, the, or open tele uh, telemetry. JWT is an RFC. Um, health is, uh, I would say, heavily influenced by Kubernetes. Uh, config is absolutely Kubernetes and, and so cloud uh, compatible. And OK, REST client is our invention, I would say. CXF or REST Easy. The, the, this was uh, how how this started and what REST Easy is. You can inject an interface. Open API is uh, also a standard, the open standard, previously known as Swagger. And Open Tracing is distributing tracing API um, with Jaeger Tracing, also a part of CNCF. And default tolerance, I would say, this is uh, similar to Java E APIs because it's, it uh, it comes with a bunch of annotations which which you can use for you know fallbacks bulkheads circuit breakers and stuff and stuff like that so um so what it means is this upper part 
iterates faster than the uh, lower part, which is uh, the same, you know, an operating system. It has uh, slower release uh, cycles than uh, than the software which runs. This is not quite, or or let's say a framework which runs on top of the operating system, right? So um, so this is this is my point of view, and um, I think it's a good thing that they are separated because um, yeah, they loosely coupling, right? Like microservices, the release cycle of this one is different to this one, so it's a good thing to keep them separated. My point of view is user point of view. If I were a vendor, I had different point of view, but from the user perspective, it's fine. So this is the uh, second uh, slide with some content on it. So what productivity means for me? First, um, and and what what it means is not like, you know, I need it for sure, because if you do a Jakarta E or micro profile a lot, you will set up your environment once and you are happy usually. But I'm not only working, you know, for me alone somewhere. I also working on my, uh, for, for, for different clients, customers with different teams. And I have to set up the stuff on, on different machines, help developers. And um, and some developers don't like Jakarta E, you know, or micro profile. So they will try to find something which doesn't work. So what I would like to see, you know, is as far as, as easy setup as possible. Mm -hmm. So um, how easy it can be. So uh, let's take a look on Whitefly. I can show you how what I do with Whitefly. So I have a script reinstall Whitefly, and what it basically does, it pulls the uh, the uh, recent Whitefly zip. This is the full, the largest Whitefly. Deletes the old one, and I have I think it's called Whitefly Home. Whitefly Home. Whitefly home, yeah, and this is uh, it points to the to the recent Whitefly installation. I have the same for Pyara, but I don't like to install Pyara today, and the reason is uh, because I'm using screen sharing for now because of Crowdcast, and it collides with Pyara port. So I changed the configuration a bit, and if I would do this, but I have exactly this the same script script for Pyara and for Liberty, and before project I do this. And uh, on my on my uh, with my clients or 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 or, or external projects, I tell developers go download and unzip, and, and you are set actually. So I hope it's done. Um, this is the setup, and I think this is, can be any easier actually. So the, the next thing is time to hello world. So if I would you know require to have I don't know uh, if we we had to know recompile the Linux kernel. In order to deploy a Java e application or Jakarta e application, I think we wouldn't be very successful. So for me, it's important to know how fast you see results on the screen, how fast you can deploy. And I'm talking just about local deployment. And what I usually do, and this is independent of clouds or not. So we started with Whitefly. So set up Jakarta E8 project. Let's say CN uh, cloud native Whitefly. So if I do this. What happens behind the scenes? Um, a CN4J project was created with conventions, so I can rely that if I do Maven clean install, it will create a war with the same name as the folder. So um, I have the same for a war here. Then I can rely that in POM, there is the artifact ID is the same as here. And if I open my IDE and people ask me whether I'm using NetBeans or not, I use NetBeans all the time, and for shorter screencasts, I use Visual Studio Code. So this time, I open NetBeans for you, and I get questioned whether I'm still using Visual Studio Code <laughs> after the show. But um, yeah, I'm using both. And um, so let's do this. And uh, hopefully, the project appears here. So uh, it um, tries to synchronize. And this is my Jakarta A project. And what's also important to me, you know, don't make me think. So we have artifact ID is CN, uh, CN, um, WF, and I would expect to see the same in the IDE. So I don't like, you know, to put your name. So this is very important for productivity. Just, you know, it, it should always look the same and you should just focus on business logic and not fiddle with the build process. So having that said, so all my projects are actually comprising both. And actually this could be three, two already. I'm just using 330 for probably one of my clients was had not the recent application server, but with the Pyara what I have and Whitefly it could ru run on 3.2. And I'm using mostly JDK 11, sometimes JDK 1.8, and because still of my clients some are running on 1.8, I have 1.8, but um, I, I have I think is uh, Java minus version should be 11. 
Yeah, and 14 is for fun right now. So this is uh, this is my setup. So why it's important for productivity? Productivity, a short poem, because what I do from time to time are also code reviews, and if the poem is complicated, it is really hard to understand why it's so complicated. My expectations are, you know, something. I don't know, something esoteric is going on in the project. And what I try to find out first is, is there anything else than provided? Because provided means uh, it is already provided by the runtime, by the application server. And if there are runtime dependencies, I ask myself why you need the dependencies, because every additional dependency means you will have to learn new stuff. And um, if, you, if you have to learn new stuff, the problem is, of course, you know, it takes time. And you have to argue with your colleagues why you're using uh jackson and no jet jettison for instance and we can completely omit the discussion discussion by using json b which ships with the platform okay now by the way if you have any questions feel free to ask and uh so ask in chat and um i will switch to chat and we can have a discussion otherwise it will be just a boring you know live streaming read only streaming okay so we have it back to the slides uh time to hello world no best of breed no bike shedding what i mean by that is so i already actually said i would like to have both without being specific what actually it means so i still don't know whether i'm going to use rest easy or jersey or hibernate or eclipse link i actually don't care and um if i had to decide now what will happen in my world I will spend at least two or three meetings to discuss why we need, you know, Hibernate or Payara uh, or whatever. I actually don't care. It's like, look, let's go with that and then, you know, focus on, on, on the runtimes. And if Payara doesn't work, we can go to Whitefly. And if Whitefly doesn't go, doesn't work, we go to Open Liberty and, and, and Tommy. And then if everyone is not happy, then try Helidon. Uh, with a little bit migration or Quarkus with a little bit of migration. So we have lots of options, but we don't have to decide up front. And um, from my perspective, it's just agile. So we don't have, you know, to decide everything from the first minute. We can just let it go with Jakarta E with the APIs and decide later if we need something or not. Okay. Cool. And by the way, all my projects look the same because all the application servers I know support now both Jakarta E8 and uh, and micro profile even Whitefly. So Whitefly was uh, the slowest, which is actually incredible, because uh, Smallry was the, uh, is actually the, the largest committer to Smallry is I believe is Red Hat, which is also behind Whitefly, and they were still a little bit slow. So um, yeah, now we have that. So um, to project, I just have hello world. So it doesn't matter for now for today because uh, code doesn't matter. We talk about productivity first. So fast builds, and this is really true so if we switch now and just build it again by the way you don't have to do the clean i'm only cleaning if there is no uh, maven committers watching if they are watching they always say you don't have to clean so uh, if someone if there is you know a maven committer in the audience just oversee the cleaning <laughs> it's not needed so what we have so it built in 1.7 seconds which is actually com um, very competitive and it is actually faster than a quarkus compile or or Helidon compile. Why that? Because I don't have to pull the dependencies, nothing. I just know uh, have the API. So it's a little bit faster. Um, yeah, from this perspective. Okay, so we have fast build, key to success. If it builds enough for minutes, no one would like to, to have that. So fast deployments. So what it means is it has to be somehow Docker compatible. So um and, and fast deployments first. So let's see what happens. So um I think. Have we started Whitefly? I don't think so. So start Whitefly. And this is the recent Whitefly, I think, I don't know, two, three weeks old. And now it started, not very slow, actually pretty fast. And um, I created a tool, WhatSH, and I get lots of questions about the tool. And this is the most primitive tool you can properly build. And uh, why I'm mentioning this, because this tool, what it does, it just watches changes in my file system. On an every change, it does Maven clean, clean deploy and copies the war. And I can do this because I know the convention to the folders from the application servers. And I have um, Open Liberty, Payara, and uh, this is uh, huh, this is Tom. This is Tommy. This is Open Liberty. This is uh, uh, 
Whitefly and this is Payara. So all four servers, except Quarkus or Helidon, because um, I, they, they don't understand wars or they 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 use jars. Okay, so we have it. So what it means is now uh, I can already uh, um, rely on the availability. So this 8080 is not always true. For instance, um, uh, uh, Open Liberty uses different port, but because it's application servers, most of the application servers will allow you to use resources. So see, uh, this is this is actually standard. This is semi-standard, I would say. And pink is just uh, um, so we see that it works. This is Whitefly, and uh, Matrix uh, does not work because uh, Whitefly is interesting. What Whitefly does, it from the beginning introduces bulk hats. So what it means, the Matrix, the Prometheus Matrix, and th this is a micro profile, come from a different port, which is actually smart. And and Payara does the same, can do the same. That they, you can expose the matrix via uh, the admin port. Why is this smart? Because uh, the admin interface or the ad admin port uh, has a different um, port number. Uh, sorry, <laughs> has different uh, thread pool than the uh, 8080 port. And why it's why it's so important? So if the server is overloaded, you can st still pull the monitoring data. Okay, so now we have that. So now the question is, okay, cool. So local deployment seems to be fast. So what about Docker? So let's see. So one step further to the Kubernetes and the clouds, Docker. So Glassfish today, uh, let's go with Whitefly as, as well, Whitefly. So with Whitefly, so what I will have to do is Maven clean install or, or just forget the clean. And then uh, Docker build and now minus T, let's say Eclipse. Hopefully I can do this and Eclipse and then CNWF dot. So, and now it builds the Maven and it very quickly build the images. So the question is why that quickly? So if I go to Docker history, what I will find is the following uh, Eclipse, I think CNWF. And what you see is 14 seconds ago, what I did six hours ago, so today morning, I just um, um, updated the Whitefly and the Payara, Payara was already updated, but the Whitefly image to 19.1, so it's already in the Docklands repository. This is on my slide, so you can just, just try to replicate it at home. And um, yeah, and uh, seven months ago, I, I created the operating system. It's probably CentOS 7. So, um, so, uh, so what it means is, or two weeks ago was JDK 11. So what it means is uh, because of application servers, and this is also what Sebastian mentioned in the in the Quarkus talk, these layers are frozen, immutable, and I could I could push them to a cloud, which will I will do actually in a second, and then and then pull them from uh, from from a cloud and run them. So let's try this in 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 in, in real time. So what I can actually do right now is say Docker push. Eclipse, CN, oh, uh, yeah, CNWF. So if I do this, it pushes. Ah, uh, it says denied, which is a really, which is a pity, because uh, I will have to log into my uh, to my uh, to my Docker Hub. This is in in the morning it worked, and now my token expired, and this is to Docker Hub. But what you already, what you would see is. That all the layers are already uh, existing, and I would just push uh, push around, you know, eight max. So this is this is a pity, because um, yeah, uh, I cannot show you the push to my uh, Docker Hub, and uh, which would um, which would uh, replicate somehow the uh, the push to uh, to a real uh, you no know, Docker registry. Because in all clouds there are private Docker registries. You push to the Docker registry, or you can push to your to your to your own private Docker registry, and then pull it from the cloud. Okay. So this is unfortunate, but uh, you get a point. So what it means is you would see that actually all the layers are already in the cloud, and the last layer, this one with 4K, would be pushed to the cloud. Okay, so I think we have it, or I misspelled. No, we have it. Or wait a second, what it could be, this is probably... That's the problem. Let's see. 
I cannot push to Eclipse, unfortunately, but I can push to my own repository. Uh, Docker push, air hex, air hex, CNWF. Ha! Huh. Um, what you see, my latest white fly was not pushed at all, so I will have to do it now and then push it again. So um, this is the initial build. So what you see is the Whitefly uh, 91 is pushed to uh, to to the public registry. It happens one and uh, once, and then I will repeat that. So you will see, you know, what happens on every on every change. Okay. So um, but I'm glad that it works. So we have fast deployments. So we saw locally is actually incredibly fast, and this is that fast that. Um, People expect me, you only have to know to rewatch some of the older AXTV. They ask me, no, what are you doing? Are you replacing a bytecode with the word? No, I'm built complete the complete application. And because I have no dependencies, it is very fast. By the way, uh, be, be, uh, because most of the Jakarta E and MicroProfile applications don't have any external dependencies, they are very easy to migrate to Helidon or, or, uh, or uh, Quarkus. The more dependencies you have, the more problematic it gets, you know, to optimize and, and, and at the end to run on GraalVM, for instance. For me as a consultant, very important, learn once and never migrate. So what it means is I can very easily you know, learn new environments like uh, Quarkus or Helidon because it's very, very similar to uh, the old, uh, or to the old, to Jakarta and to MicroProfile. It's actually the same um, with some, um, and for instance, uh, in Helidon or Quarkus, there, is, there are no EJBs, but you can, you know, replace the servlet with request scoped and transactional. You get nearly the same experience, nearly. So we have it, learn once, never migrate, and use the platform first. So this is also very important, like no bike shading. So what I do in the in the workshop is the fall uh, workshops and projects and workshops, no one cares, but in the projects, I say, okay, we focus first on, you know, what we have on, the, on, on JDK, then application server, and if something is really lacking, then let's talk about this later. And, and there are lots of projects where we just went to production without any external dependency. Okay, cool. That, these are the references. And now a live workshop uh, about web components. And this is my very last slide, which is really nice because then I can show you some more stuff. So, okay. So we pushed the entire server by mistake to the cloud and... Um, and so we have Whitefly here, and let's perform a change to show you the effect. So we uh, have here a message, and let's say Jakarta EE9 with MicroProfile 3.2, of course. So and now let's build this again. So we have it. And then we can push it again. And now it's become interesting. And this is uh, a real push to a remote repository. This is my own AirHacks public Docker repository. And I don't know, and this already happened. So the last 10 seconds, I really hate that it happens, but it actually, I don't know, it probably it compares the hashes or whatever. But um, actually, this was the only first thing. So it was significantly faster than the very first, first push. Uh, it took probably, I don't know, 20 seconds or 30 seconds. So what it basically means is the smaller the war, the faster the push. Okay, this was the push to the remote Docker registry. Now the question is, you know, what about um, Kubernetes? So what I have here, I actually wanted to use Kubernetes, but I don't use bare Kubernetes a lot. So either I use this, it's a OpenShift, or I use, you know, uh, Kubernetes, manage Kubernetes in the in the clouds. And I have already here an AirHacks configuration with a test running because I was curious whether it, it works. I would like to delete uh, the test TST this also takes too long um, you have to wait until it deletes the tests yeah now it's gone and uh, hopefully the test is deleted so and um, so what I would plan to do is to deploy to Kubernetes. So I won't use as uh, so an open shift is basically Kubernetes with some more edit features. And uh, the first time I, I won't use this um, this edit features. So usually I use S2I images or whatever. And this time I would misuse OpenShift as bare Kubernetes platform and just pull from the public cloud now. So what we have here is CNWF. So because I'm uh, 
I, I'm a, a senior developer because I I, I managed to you know to uh, actually twice in a row to edit a, a YAML file, um, but only twice. So I created a small script which actually um, replaces uh, a, with a placeholders with SED so set script, which replaces service name with a project name, and uh, this is create deployment YAML. And the name is the same, CNWF. So I could, I could automate it a little bit. What here happens is it just copies and replaces one name. So and should open Visual Studio Code. So what happened? It created a uh, a route, a service, and a deployment config. And um, so what I and config map is absolutely optional. The config map, but I wanted to show a little bit more. And uh, the image stream is a requirement more or less for for OpenShift uh, because it's abstraction from Docker. So on uh, on Kubernetes, you don't have to use the uh, the image stream. But what I don't have a build config, build configuration. So I just uh, don't use it now. Uh, but if you are interested, just search for S2I Adam Bean, and you will find deployments on my YouTube channel with uh, in the OpenShift way. So so I have it. This is my YAML, and what basically happened is I just replaced you know. All occurrences of service name with CNWF. So if you replace this with Duke, you can deploy a Duke service, and this is basically it. So don't make me think and a convention of a configuration with some sensible defaults. Okay, so uh, what I can do: OC create minus F. This is the actually uh, Kubernetes way uh, and uh, YAML. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, YAML, uh, OC create minus F deployment. So, and what happens now? It created the CNWF. Now it pulls the dependency. And I actually forgot whether this is Payara or Whitefly. And uh, it should start. It already started. So this was a very fast deployment. Why? Because the base layer was already pushed to OpenShift. So what happened right now, it just pulled from the public Docker Hub, the war, and it started. I think I still get some trouble. And you probably, oh, yeah, OK. This is uh, easy easy, easy to see. Why that? Because uh, the uh, Whitefly exposes the readiness and liveness probe on different port. So this is our Whitefly deployment. And what it means is uh, I have to check to port 9990, not 8080. So what I will have to do is to adjust my beautiful YAML and hopefully without errors. Watch this. This is now, no, I think it's 9990, hopefully. Try that. So OC, uh, delete all config map yeah let's go with that minus l app and c and wf takes too long so the problem with the clouds is the deletion removal so deployment is fast removal is slow so this is what we have to fix in the next iteration of kubernetes you should uh, delete the cloud faster so um now what I also have here, the first time, config maps. And this is actually easy. So what happens with the config map is the following. So I have here a config map with a message, hello, OpenShift. And this is like this is like a table. And what I use in my uh, in my deployment config, environment name, air hex message. So this is what I actually can use in my source code. And this points to air message. OK, now it is deleted. And see how fast the actual creation is, but deletion is very slow. So now let's see. Um, we have now deployment, and we have the deployment pod, and deployment created the actual pod, and in the logs you see it started, and in the overview you should see it is deployed. So this was um, a full deployment from more or less scratch with my prepared template, which I use all the time actually. And um, this is a, a, a full-blown, the largest available whitefly on the planet. So um, let's see whether it works, right? So uh, we have to go to uh, routes. And this is the uh, CNWF route. Show details. Uh, I don't have the certificate for that. So uh, we have the whitefly. And then we had 
what we had was uh, CNWF, resources and pink. So enjoy Jakarta AI9 with MicroProfile 3.2. Um, so now what I said is what we could do, we could actually inject a config. So what about updates, config property and name equals airhex message strings string uh airhex just call this this way plus airhex message so my machine is already a little bit hot so there is a, a open shift a mini shift running docker running standalone server running and the crowd crowdcast is also running so a uh, lot of stuff running here and netbeans and visual studio code as well so now uh we did it now maven clean install do it again so we build rebuild the entire project i have to push it to the cloud docker docker push and by the way what you saw unintentionally in my in in, in the session is um the uh what happens on every three months if there is no, no new whitefly version available uh so i pushed just the new version to the cloud it was 220 max I don't have to re-push you know, the entire CentOS image because it didn't change just the so it is um so now I have to push it. And now we should see that it actually exactly this is the war changed, everything remains the same. And then because we have uh OpenShift, I have to do something OC import image, and this is CNWF. So, and just the import, and we should see that uh, created two hours ago, image created 40 seconds ago, this should trigger actually redeployment. So if you go here to uh, overview, we see that it actually redeploys because there's an image change. So what I just did is say, look, there's new image and it redeployed the image. And what it actually means is we should have here, hello OpenShift with the data from, from the uh, config map. So now there's the question, okay, Adam, what about Payara? Sorry, Adam, just yeah. because you asked me to interrupt you, we have a question here. Does your Minishift installation already have the application server you're using downloaded? Running the application within Minishift was quick. Okay. Uh, what I what I did uh, uh, today or yesterday, I created the new images for Payara and Whitefly, and I created another application just to test to test whether it actually works for the presentation with the newer images and JDK 11, I need this for something else. And it's okay, now I'll show you the newer stuff. And to test it, I push the application. What happens is OpenShift comes with a uh, Docker registry inside and uh, it already contains the base layers, but this is how clouds are working. So if this were, uh, let's say, uh, Microsoft Azure Cloud or AWS Cloud, this, this exactly the same would happen, you would push to the private registry directly to, um, I think it's called Elastic Container Registry or ECR or something from, from, from Amazon. And uh, and then once, and then just war. So there will be no difference. But this is true. What I did just for test, I initially initially created uh, the, uh, the uh, other applications with the same immutable layers. If this were a Uber jar or Fed jar, it wouldn't matter. I would have to redeploy always the entire infrastructure. But the cool story is with all application servers and uh, Halidon and Quarkus as well, they clearly separate the uh, business logic from the infrastructure, what is very, very good for productivity. What I forgot to mention in my slides as well is, um, what you shouldn't forget is security scanning. So many companies are very obsessive with security scanning of deployables. And um, in this particular case, you only have to rescan the uh, the wars or the jars. You don't have to rescan the entire application server which makes you know your your chances higher to actually you know go to production on one one day. Cool. Um, any other questions, moderator? No, that's it for now. Hey, cool. So I will switch to the code. The uh, chat is too colorful, too distracting. So you no, know, black and white is the right environment, or, or black and green, or white, white. Yeah. So we have it. So what what you what you saw is was um, an an image change event. What you also saw is um, something different um, and um, forgot to mention is the following were the aliveness and readiness probes so they're already shipping with actually all servers out of the box um if we how to show you this the easiest is if i change to my pod which is kind of a docker container 
this is my part and I go to terminal and say curl because this is not expo ex not exposed via the route I'm running now with uh, with um, whitefly so localhost 8080 slash health so there is ah oh, no no 8080 9990 health so as you can see this is the health check and i can also go and say uh live is live so i actually uh, reused the already existing you know default health check because because of micro profile i actually can rely on the existence of the same you know uri so uh, regardless which applications that I'm using, I can always use the same template. So um, for instance, if I would like to use, uh, so there was about fly, white fly, and now let's talk about fishes like Payara. So if I will do something else with um, uh, Payara, this is the recent one. And uh, hopefully I push the, the, the Payara and just do exactly the same now. So now I'm building the entire application against Payara. So as everything is the same, actually the, the, the last part is different. Then I push and uh, yeah, I can push, Docker push to the cloud. And you see there are more layers and hopefully Payara is pushed. Yeah, it was pushed. As you can see, there's still 7K. So it's ex roughly the same. And um, why? because I tested Payara, the recent one, 5.201, pushed to the cloud, and now it only recognizes the changes, and it just, you know, pushed the war. Now the question is um, how the um, history looks like, and this was not Eclipse rather than AirHex. AirHex, AirHex. So this was two weeks ago, I pushed the recent Payara, and 48 seconds ago, it was the, uh, the, the 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 last layer and the file is four but the entire docker uh, layer are 8k so this is the difference okay so i push the layer now uh i will have to delete everything this is the easiest oh deleting takes too long <laughs> delete everything and then reinstall everything why because uh i will have to change the port that's the problem uh, Payara doesn't know about uh, this, so 8080, so should be better. And now after it's deleted, which takes forever, creation is a lot faster and deployment is faster. So what it means, you know, how to evaluate evaluate uh, cloud native runtimes? Uh, creation should be faster than deletion. Then it's perfect. So <laughs> uh, OC create this one. So it's done, and now we should see what happens here. So we have CNW, the first deployment, because um, I think this is an error because it remembers the old stuff, but let's see. Um, applications, pods, running, terminal, locks, and Payara is up and running. So this is uh, the same image on Payara right now, I skip Open Liberty and told me it would be exactly the same. So um, now I deploy it um, to Kubernetes as uh, OpenShift without any OpenShift magic. And um, so now uh, let's see. Yeah, it is already blue. It means health checks were checked. And uh, go to the route applications routes and CNW. This is now Payara and CN. WF actually should be P, but so this is now from Payara with the same config map. So this is the same output. And because it's Payara, it just uses 8080 per default. I think uh, health should be available here, which is, and this is the default live, and uh, which is the output a little bit different. What I just checked, it should be no 200, not I don't check inside here. And um, and metrics should be also exposed here, metrics. Which they are, and Open API is also exposed. So this is the pink server and the uh, pink server, pink resource, and this is the default uh, default uh, Open API uh, YAML again. <laughs> so okay. So what it means is uh, for me, uh, just coming back to the high level presentation this time. Actually. 
the um, infrastructure should be boring, always the same. And if you have the right conventions and you can focus on APIs, um, you are actually more productive because, you know, this is like self-constraining. You say, look, we have now Java, so don't talk about Groovy or Kotlin or whatever because we are in Java project. And on a Kotlin project, just spend, you know, your time on, on, on Kotlin or Groovy and not talk about Java. Just focus on one thing and, um, and then you have, you know, free room to, to, to think about business logic and um and actually the 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 client requirements and uh, also um f funny story or interesting story in some project i was hired you know 10 years ago and, and clients come to me uh, say okay the project still r runs great and the cool observation we did is um probably the code is not not the cleanest because it's an old project but we never had migrate you know um somewhere else and there were project with funky frameworks which uh, most of the frameworks already died or or changed completely so that they had to know to refactor or migrate the project back and forth. Mm -hmm. But with uh, Java E and now Jakarta, you can rely on um, on stable APIs. And even in the case, you know, uh, in, in the case, uh, hopefully it will happen, you know, the renaming to Jakarta E namespace. So then it's more or less, you know, I would say, yeah, kind of migration, but it's actually just you no know, um, search and replace. So it's not you know, uh, uh, um, a huge a huge problem. So. Um, I think I'm open for questions, so I could you know implement some trivial stuff. But I think the other speakers did a great job, so I don't like you know to to show you how great uh, micro profile is because it is already great. And um, so I would rather open for questions. So uh, now, I don't see questions. any questions there yeah. right now, uh, and you have four minutes, Adam. Uh, if there is any questions, please. Uh, yeah, uh, four yeah. minutes. I'm open for questions. So. Um, what are our questions? So they can either type them in the chat section or in the ask a question section. So that's where I read okay. the first question from Philip. OK. So uh, for JVM, it took quite long to get GC right and very fast. Probably the same for the cloud providers who's deleting stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and having said that, um, this is OpenShift 3.6 was way faster with deleting than 3.9. So it seems like no, the uh, the deletion takes longer and longer. So for to be us, um, yeah, John Yeri is. Uh, I know John from 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 somewhere from Java One. So he's an old friend actually. So um, no questions. So this is no, actually I really disappointing. Question, Adam, I ah, see yeah. one uh, in the ask a question section. Uh, I, I think you have it yeah. open. See, thin thin war sounds yeah. great, but our Jakarta E war is over 200 max. Any tips for slimming it down? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. First, uh, what I do is um, I, I scan the war, I search for everything for anything which is not provided or test. This is usually runtime, and all the runtime dependencies I created as uh, if this is a big project and 200 max is, is is really big. So then I would create an Excel sheet if this is um, you know for management, and then ask myself you know what is the absolute no added value of this dependency what problem does it solve and uh, usually you know jakarta commons lang and jakarta is is used mostly for uh, nicer to string or uh, left padding or string empty or something so this is absolutely optional so i would just remove these but apache poi is hard to remove but what you can do with most servers is a little bit harder with whitefly um actually easy with helidon uh, Quarkus and uh, also easy with Payara, you can ship, you know, the 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 base. You can consider the um, the the business dependencies are part of the platform of Jakarta E and ship with the base layer, and then your worry is still thin. Okay, One cool. Uh, is micro profile reactive messaging mature enough to be used in production? Uh, we use uh, micro profile reactive uh, messaging in production, and what we do is we transforming Kafka messages to WebSocket messages. It works great. So a general question: whether it is major enough? Nothing is major enough. We found problem problems everywhere in one project, even on IBM old host. So it was actually impossible to find an error, but we found an error. So um, you will have to test, and if this test passes, I will just use it. The question is, are the APIs stable? I would say, I, I think so. And if not, you know, how long will it take to adopt to, uh, to the new APIs? I see two more questions. Um, right, cool. Well, wait a second. I don't see the questions. I have to scroll. Ah, scrolling is. And uh, go from, from, from down. Is there a real practical advent advantage having multiple implementation in comparison to I, to I what? 
What happened? Uh, ah, is the real uh, a practical advantage having multiple implementation in comparison to a season themed framework? Please answer the suitable for architects and project managers. Um, I think, uh, of course, because um, if, if I enter a project, uh, I don't have, you know, to say use XYZ or something else. I say just, you know, negotiate with Red Hat, Payara, IBM or whoever, you know, I don't care. We just use Jakarta EA API. I'm a developer. You are the business, you know, manager. Just, you know, negotiate from which vendor you get the best support. If you have one, how you call it, themed framework, you will have to negotiate with the theme framework. And having said that, if the project is really critical, I don't think you will run without commercial support. So we probably could, but either you will have to dedicate, you know, uh, persons to um, to manage the dependencies and the the, 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 the runtime, um, or easier to buy support and have no security patches, for instance. Very good. Does your mini shift installation already have the application server you are using downloaded? Uh, and not the application server, the base Docker images were automatically downloaded because I tested today morning whether it will run on JDK 11, and it did. So this this happened. So the next was, um, yeah, we did it. And Jaxor's multi-platform multi data upload is not portable between Jesse and the rest. This is true. What approach do you use in your project to make it portable? I, I just uh, use either REST Easy or uh, or Jersey approach and I commend it or it's really easy to find because I will search for imports and you know to port it from Jersey to REST Easy is not a big deal. So it's very, very easy. So I don't think it's... No, the question is what happens if you have to port? How long will it take? And I would say not that long. And this is also an uh, isolated case. And if your project is really, really important and you have lots of uploads, what you could do you can encapsulate the uploads in a dedicated microservice, and then it is completely encapsulated. This is, of, of course, complete over-engineering, but um, you could do this. OK, I, any other questions? So, I think we're over time, and I don't see any other questions there. Yeah. So thank we you so much. We could talk longer, but uh, what I heard is the uh, attendees you know, complained that there was no stretching and no yoga between sessions. So now we stop, right? Exactly. We stop right now? Yes. And see you in September. Uh, yes, yeah, so thank you for your excellent presentation, Adam. It was great as always. So we're going to have a 10 minutes break and see you everyone at uh, 1 p.m. in 10 minutes for the next session. Thank you, thank you very much. And I'm going to end the broadcast. Thanks. Bye.